in one corner of one country, in one continent, on one planet, that's a corner of a galaxy, that's a corner of a universe, that's a corner of a multiverse, that is forever growing and shrinking and creating and destroying and never remaining the same for a single millisecond. Two people are about to eat sandwiches and talk about science, software and stuff. Welcome indeed. Hello. Hello. How's everyone doing? Not bad, not bad. Lovely. We've got a, we've got a full house in the studio today. We've got our, uh, our regular uh, internet slash Tumblr expert, Catherine. Say hello, Catherine. Hello. There we go. That was, uh, that was short and sweet. Said, hello, Catherine. Okay, there we <laughs> I'm go. A fool. Yes. Uh, well, we did say say hello, Catherine, but yes. uh, you yeah. were you were failing from the off, sticking Indeed. it. You were you were sticking it and yes. doing your own thing. The, the window for that joke has has now passed. The window, yeah, yes. Should we just hello? Should we just okay? Should anyway, we, should we do the intro? Okay. Yeah. Who are you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to tell me. Uh, okay. <laughs> you're Catherine. Who are you? Going so well. My name's Chris. Oh, lovely. And I'm. Who are you? Princess Consuela Banana Hammock. Okay. Yep. Interesting. Let's, let's try that again. I'm. Princess Consuela Banana Hammock. Oh. One more time. Just crap bag. First name crap. Last name bag. Excellent. Okay. There we go. I'm. I'm glad we are. We are milking that joke for all it's worth. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's been two months it since we last It has been two months. It's two been far months. too long. Far too long. Indeed. And also, do you want to know a fun fact about the last episode of Geekly Chronicles? Please do tell me. It didn't exist. Uh, I was here. I was also here. We but, did but We did. A, we did a we thing. did the thing. It was live. And then it didn't exist. Basically, because one of us around the table is a colossal idiot and... I'm almost 100% certain that that was me. Uh, the last episode of the Geekly Chronicles didn't show up on the website properly because it played episode one instead of episode two, and it was all broken. But but I fixed it, and now you can listen again to episode two at gklway.co slash episodes if you want to. Lovely. So episode two didn't exist for two months, but now yes. it has, and that's now fine. Now it does. And now we're know. about to do another one to replace it with. Yeah, which is yes. which is great. This uh, this is episode three of the second series of the Geekly Chronicles. I'm going to write that down, yeah. just in case. Yeah, make make a note of that. Episode there we go. Episode three. There we go. Okay. Good. Yeah, underlined it and everything. Yes. So uh, why was it two months then? It was two months because in the intervening time, I went to get some A-levels from the place where those come from. Ah, yes, the A-level factory. Yes. Yeah, I got some of those once as well. Yes. I, uh, yeah, it was, it was the days before eBay, but I did manage to uh, get some, some, some pretty good A-levels off the internet. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. I, well. Excellent quality certificates with I, the hologram and everything. It was... Mm. I've never bought A levels off the internet, but I, but I am a lord, according to my eBay profile. Really? So, so there's that. I am a. I'm able to do marriages. Apparently, mm-hmm. I'm a. I'm a reverend. Yes. Uh, according to a certificate that I bought on the internet. Also, mm. I own an acre of land on the moon. Yep, that's always that's always useful. Yeah, I mean that's pr- pretty good. I think an acre of land on the moon. Yeah. I, yeah, I might build a house there one day. Yep. An acre's pretty big, right? Yeah, you could you could you could build a pretty substantial moon base with an acre of land. Well, why would I want a moon base? I just because... kind of want a, like a place to chill out and play video games. Why, why wouldn't you uh, grow moon cheese? You say that again. I've turned your microphone on now. Oh, why wouldn't you grow moon cheese? <laughs> grow that is moon the question. On the moon, a whole it, but acre it, of moon crop. But isn't the moon already made of cheese? Therefore, you could mine cheese. I could on your mine acre. a moon mine. Mm-hmm. A moon mine. A mine on the moon. To do and platoon upon the moon. Um, I like everything about this idea already. Yeah, but like would I would I need a whole in. acre for the mine? Could I have a like a a moon house? Well, yeah, I well, suppose you, you'd only question. need you know about a meter square to send the miners down, uh-huh. and then you could hollow out the whole moon. Uh huh. I mean, moon. It might annoy your neighbours. It might do. It might, but you know, uh, you know, a moon house with a moon little window and a moon Corvette and everything is moon for me and myself and everybody around. I could rewrite that song and make it about the moon. 
I'm moon and dab a dee. No, okay, fine. I think now that you've said it on air, you have to do that. Uh, Rules. What happens when you, you just human. don't go for an eye test in like ah. a bajillion years? Yeah, that would explain it then. So we Should we do a show? Yeah. <laughs> so we, well, there's uh, loads of stuff that we'll talk about today. There uh, was a great suggestion from one of our listeners that we try and, and do a series of things explained in 10 words. So how do we explain things? In just ten words, like string theory in ten words, cake in ten words, right. uh, you know, Game of Thrones in ten words, that okay. kind of thing. So we'll have a look at that later, and we'll we'll see if Catherine can help us come up with uh, with some of those. Um, we have, as always, got our tumble fumble. Catherine, who uh, does nothing but troll the internet all day every day, has uh, has come up with some ideas for our uh, uh, you know current uh, kind of Tumblr favourites. We've got some of that coming up later as well. We're also going to talk a bit about. Science, yeah. Um, the with the um with the fillet, fillet, the 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 feli lander, feli. Yes, that's the that's the pronunciation we're guessing at. My intense hunger for chicken has made me think. Yeah, fillet. Um, um yes, yeah. that's woken up, which is rather exciting. So we're going to talk about that a bit later on. Well, and it was E three this week as it well. It was so as well. Loads of cool gaming stuff to talk about. There's all which is sorts of things. Really exciting coming out of E three. Yeah, and uh, and as always, you can drop us an email um, at uh, studio <laughs> at uh, geeklychronicles dot com. Uh, you can iMessage us. You can at the same address. At the same address. Exciting. There you go. Uh, but also we've got. Message. Yeah, there we go. But we've also got our um, our IRC room as well. So on Freenode, it's uh, GKLY is the channel. Uh, join it. And in the IRC room right now, uh, Amy has said uh, you only actually need five words for cake. The cake is a lie. That's very true. That is very true. The yeah, cake. Very always be suspicious of the cake. Do you know what video game that's a reference of to? Of course, I know what video game that's a reference to. I Google stuff before the show. Right. <laughs> Basically, most of the pop culture references I understand is because I Google them while they come up on air. Yeah, well, that sounds but, about right. I think that's pretty much what I do with everything in life. Yeah. Anyway. Moving uh, on. Yeah, let's play a song before we do any of that, though. This was one that I picked. We've got loads of requests, and if you want a song on the show, please do the things like tweeting at us, mention it in the IRC channel, do other bits and pieces. But yes. uh, right now, first song uh, is one that I really like. That's and, always uh, good. Yeah, let's see if people know what it is. It's the Geekly Chronicles. It's all about pizza and physics and stuff. Ah, oh, I love that song. It is. <clears throat> you still have no idea who it's by. That's that's very true. It's Bell and Sebastian. But speaking of songs, oh yeah, this is another one of those times where I try and do a flawless presenter segue. And oh, it, lovely. It's just you know, I'm I, essentially yeah, forcing my topic on air. But speaking of songs, we also need to talk about the geekly favourite, the bad song of the week. Yes, that's right. Every time we do a live show, we do a bad song of the week uh, because there are so many really awful songs out there. There are indeed. And we want you to vote and tell us what the worst song is. Yes. Um, and we have a new way of being able to vote as well. Oh, I heard some some jangling. Yeah, we're getting a phone call. That's exciting. I don't know what to do now. Should should we answer it? Maybe. Live on air? Is that is that a good idea? Why not? Why not? Oh, they've rung off. Oh. <laughs> uh, just as I hit accept as well. Well, uh, there we go. We go. I haven't had that before. I should really that was... mute that tab. Just yeah, to... <laughs> probably. Because... So it doesn't ring while we're talking. Well, um, that was awfully exciting. Anyway, so we do indeed have a new way of voting for the bad song of the week. We did have a voicemail. Oh, oh. The, it's ringing again. Exciting. Oh, Press oh, the button. Answer it. Let's answer the phone. It would like to use our microphone. We can do that. There's a call for Geekly. To accept, press one. Hello? You're on the Geekly Chronicles. Hello. You're live on air. <laughs> Please don't swear. <laughs> My goodness, we have our first live caller to the show. This is amazing. I'm Please incredibly excited. Tell, tell the world who you are. Well, I'm someone that does things. Excellent. That is the best description I've heard. Mm -hmm. Well, what is, <laughs> what, what, is, what is your message to the world, having phoned us and, and got, got on air here? I have thoughts on bad music. Oh, oh, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing as I decided to take my hand in producing some terrible music. 
Awesome. Well, uh, it consists entirely of um, terribly written lyrics and text to speech. Actually, that sounds pretty good to me. Uh, yeah, that, that that could have legs. <laughs> Te- yeah, text to speech. I think in a in a song is got to be pretty good. Yes, I once heard a text to speech song of um, the voice of Siri singing "Never Gonna Give You Up" by Rick Astley, which is quite <laughs> funny. <laughs> well, I amazing. have two. Well, I use two Macintosh uh, speech voices for it. And Excellent. I tossed the link in your IRC channel. Fantastic. I, well, I mean, you could play it on air if you wanted to. I mean, there's no actually rude language in it. Like, but you might want to listen to it. A first. sad and Let's not do that. Place, Let's just put it on. Place, the wistful live here, free from fear. <laughs> oh my gosh. All those kind of heart are welcome here. Heavy hearts find friends here. They need not carry their weight alone. A place skin deep saccharin. I like this. Holy serene. <laughs> it's actually not bad. Angle this is really good. And broken fine piece here. <laughs> well, I really like that. Actually, I might have to listen to that and, and yes. play it again a bit later. That was that was good. That, that was, was good. The nowhere... second voice is the better. Is the best part. <laughs> also, when the point. Also, the point where it gets to just saying, "Ooh." Like that. <laughs> That's Brilliant. awesome. Brilliant. Well, I got bored with lyrics eventually, and. Well, I think the, the I just didn't try. <laughs> I think the bad songs that we have this week are a lot worse than that. So you have raised yes. the bar of Indeed. this segment. That is brilliant. Aww, well, that was totally not my goal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have unintentionally been awesome. So thank yes. you for that. And uh, we will uh, we will leave you to listen now, and we will show our bad songs. Thank you so much for calling in and being on air. <laughs> no problem. There we go. Lovely. That was, I, that we, was rather yeah, exciting. The telephone works. I didn't know we could do that. But uh, if you do want to call, call us... From transatlantic... Yes. Uh, yes. If you do want to call us, incidentally, the numbers are on your screen if you're watching YouTube. They are 02033 896 245 in the UK. Sorry, I didn't quite get to write that down. Just look on the screen. 415 287 9705 in the US and 0428 122 143 in Australia. If there's a country that you're in that doesn't have a number, we'll add one. Just yeah, let us know. Just, just let us know. So, bad songs then, Chris. Indeed, we have some truly terrible songs. Um, but shall we begin begin with my nomination? Yes, what is well, your nomination for bad song of the week this week? Well, every, every episode when I come on the Geekly Chronicles, I, I claim to have found the worst song in existence. And... Well, on episode one, I said I'd found the worst song. On episode two, I said I was wrong and I'd found the worst song. This that I have picked this week, I can definitively state, is the worst song in existence. I n- n- yeah, be careful. Well, I, I have I have facts to back it up with. Go on. The Guardian and the Metro described it as the worst song ever written. BuzzFeed did a list of the 30 worst songs of all time. It got number two. It was voted the worst single of the year in 2008 by readers of the uh, online magazine Pop Justice. And BuzzFeed said about the song, If aliens came to Earth and asked why everyone hates Nickelback so much, this song would be a perfect explanation. So, yeah, but that's, that's just the media. I prefer to trust our listeners. Our listeners are better than the news. So you're proposing a Nickelback song. I am indeed. Your... I've chosen Rockstar by It's terrible. What's so bad about Rockstar? Where where do I begin? Um, it's. But don't we all want to be big rock stars? I don't know the rest of the words. Sorry, my brain is easing out my. Do ears. you know the worst? The worst part of this is I do know the rest of the words because when I was doing the research for this uh, this segment, I discovered to my horror that in a former life on an old iTunes account, I actually owned a copy of this song. We are just a Brilliant. Which, which was a horrifying thing to discover. Um, so, so you want people to vote for Rockstar like by Nickelback? To, because it is the worst song in existence. And if you disagree, the I internet disagree. says you're wrong. I disagree because I think my song is worse than yours. Uh, you may remember from the first week of the show, I had managed to find an old song by a band called Pizza Kids about liking pizza. They were a German band. Well, now I have found a new, up-to-date, this has just been released, song. And it is another food-related one. Oh, dear. But this is like a... Um, 
I think she was billed as the new Rebecca Black, which is always uh, a, a quality bar measure. And it is a song all about food and this person's love of food. Here's a, here's a snippet of the chorus for you. You're so, actually dancing <laughs> as the song is playing. I can't help it. It's catchy. But yeah, I mean, so the reason that this song is so bad is not only is it awful, not only is it ridiculous lyrically and an insult to the very concept of a song, but it's catchy and you will find yourself singing it and dancing along to it. Nickelback, I can forget about 95% of the time. This song will be in my head for a decade. Seriously. And to add to it, it's really, really quite racist as well, which makes it terrible. Because at the start of the song, it's just got on the video some guy cooking Chinese food doing a bit of a, a, an instructional demonstration like this. <laughs> No subtitles or anything. It's just a, a guy stood there talking Chinese. Right. It's ridiculous. I see. It is so ridiculous that it is my nomination for Bad Song this week. Well, it's a strong contender, but is it the worst song of all time? It is That's... Not, but it's not worse than Nickelback. It is, it is not worse than Nickelback's existence, but it is a worse song than Rockstar by Nickelback. I think I, th I I think Rockstar is the epitome of all that is wrong with Nickelback, but I think we have to put it to the vote. That's right. It is it is as, listeners as choice. are the rules. Yes, listeners' choice. We've put the two nominations on our website at gkly.co forward slash bad. Uh, you can go on there and it will give you both both of the options, and you can vote for the one that is the worst. Absolutely. Uh, don't forget, you can tweet us, uh, message us on IRC as well. Um, but yeah, uh, absolutely. Just let us know what you think the uh, the worst song is yes. of the two. We'll it's have mine. the results. It's mine. It's mine. It's definitely mine. When we whisper, we sound almost the same. We kind of do. for the Chinese food song. Vote for the Nickelback. <laughs> 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 Nickelback anyway. is terrible. <laughs> anyway, yes, we will be revealing the results later in the show. So, yes, um, I've got that song in my head now. Ciao, ma, 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 main. This is going to be yeah. a hellish <laughs> two hours, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We've got some nominations coming in in the chat room of what uh, our listeners think are the worst songs of all time as well. We'll have to look through those to choose for next time. Uh, someone saying that switching to vote killed their audio. We should say open a new tab. We're yeah, not quite that, that clever when it comes to web design. We're, when I say we, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. who's the web person? Mm -hmm. Catherine. Um. <laughs> Bog off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Catherine's getting sweary. I almost got away with that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Open a new tab. But uh, yes, gkly.co forward slash bad to vote for the bad song of the week, which is obviously Rockstar by Nickelback. Um, and in fact, as the web person, I could just make the other choice disappear. I never thought that one through, did I? That would have been clever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'd probably have thrown things, though. So, you know. Okay. I do value my personal safety more than winning this. But only just. <sighs> anyway. So, you know, uh, that thing that landed on a comet, changing yeah. tack slightly. Yeah. Change, ever so slightly. That that blob of bits and bobs that they managed to land on a comet. Yeah, the one, uh, the one with the name that nobody can pronounce. Yeah. Was that your invitation for me to attempt to pronounce it? Well, yeah, you've seen the person that launched it talk, haven't that's, you? So. That's very true. The, I'm going to guess here, the feli lander because that's how, that's how Monica Grady says it. Who? She was the... You know, when, when it actually landed on the comet, uh, they, she was all over the news because she was the one that was jumping up and down at the ESA headquarters and screaming, that's fantastic! That's fa you can probably find a clip on YouTube. I, I saw a talk by her during which she managed to remain 
almost entirely composed, astonishingly, and talk about how how the whole Feli Lander thing went down, which was rather exciting. But the, the more exciting news is that when it landed on the comet, it was alive for a while and did all of its science. And then it went to sleep because they landed it in pretty much the only dark bit of the comet and they need all the solar panels and stuff. But because it's now summer on that comet, it has woken up again. So hang on a second, comets have seasons? Essentially. Because the comet is now closer to the sun than it was when they plopped the lander on there. And the hope was, and that's come true, that they were going to be able to uh, wake the comet up, the lander up, when... Uh, wake the comet up? This is turning very sci-fi. Essentially. They, they hoped they were going to be able to wake the wake lander the comet up. up. An aura log is inside. Sorry, I've been watching too much Adventure Time. Yeah. Is it Orlog? Was it or- Orgalog? I can't quite remember. We we watched that the other day. We did, but I have no... <laughs> I, I know it was something beginning with O and it was had log on it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the O-log. Um, we're, we're going with Orgalog. Orgalog. Or, yeah, I think it was Orgalog. Uh, anyway, no no spoilers for anyone that hasn't seen the, the end of the last series of Adventure Time. But it's very cool, so you should watch it. Indeed. Um, yeah, when the whole so, the whole last series of Adventure Time has had a bit of a comet arc to it, so um, it's all rather exciting. Yes, and comets are actually quite interesting, in spite yes. of the fact that they don't that you know they have the potential to extinguish all life on the planet. But mm. but now we might know what makes them up. Essentially, uh, Monica Grady described the the comet that they landed on as a dirty snowball. It's essentially a lump of ice and dirt and rock and stuff. But now that they're actually like drilling into it and tearing it apart, we can actually find out what's how much ice and stuff there is inside it and whether or not it's got enough stuff in it to make there be life on Earth or other planets. So they, so they think that a comet slamming into a planet would then like be a catalyst for life. Yeah, that's one, of, that's one of the theories, and that's one of the things that they hope to find out now that they can get uh, some more data back from the lander. Um, because... Yeah, there are. We're all trying to figure out how we all got here and everything, as is as is popular in scientific circles. Well, I I live here. Yeah, you got a train. I got a train. You drove. Yeah, that's how we got here. Yeah, next time I might take a comet. It, it's probably cheaper. Uh, Dan in the chat room says, "Isn't this a plot to evolution?" Uh, sort of. Yeah, that film that had um, David Duchovny. Uh, and who else was in that film? We're wondering about who was in the film, but we're sat next to two machines that are equipped with Google. Okay, fine. You be boring and Google it. I'll sit here let's, and try Let's get and, some facts try instead of use, sitting through use 60 my, seconds of dead use air. Use my brain meat to actually attempt to recall the facts that should be in my brain somewhere. Evolution is a 2001 American science fiction comedy film 2001. Starring David Duchovny Orlando Jones, Sean William Scott Julianne Moore and Ted Levine according to Wikipedia. There we go. Indeed. So yeah that's about, that's about a meteor that crashes somewhere in Arizona so basically the same thing Yeah well yeah and there was alien life in the meteor and it you know they used Head and Shoulders shampoo to kill it. Sorry if I've just spoiled the film for anyone that's not seen it, but this was two thousand and one. Yeah, it's probably it's probably past the the spoiler thing. It was it was also on TV this week. Really? So, yeah. Well, that's uh, that's okay, that might explain why. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes, that's that's very topical. Apparently, yeah, someone in the chat room only saw it as the cartoon spin-off, which was dire. Oh dear. Cartoon spin off of evolution that doesn't oh sound right. Oh dear. Doesn't sound right at all. No. Anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Comets and so stuff. Cool. Um, essentially, it's just been a crazy voyage of discovery for uh, the team at the European Space Agency that launched the Rosetta mission, uh, which was the spacecraft that dropped Feli onto the comet. Um, because, well, at first they thought the comet was potato-shaped, but then when they got closer with the Rosetta spacecraft, they took some pictures and realised it looked more like a rubber duck, so they were going to try and land on the duck's back, because that's where the sun is, but they landed, like, in the duck's neck. It's not a real duck. 
I should probably point out it's just a big comet that just looks got this like a great duck. Great image of a rubber duck flying through space. That would be that would be quite a lot more exciting. That would be than... almost exactly like <laughs> something out of Adventure Time. Indeed. Uh, so they're they're learning more and more about this comet and what it's made of and what they can do uh, while they're there. But now that the the lander has woken up again, we're hopefully going to find out some more about whether it could have been the start of life or whether it could mean there are li- there's life on other planets if it crashes into them, that sort of stuff. Yeah, I was reading this news article here. They're saying eventually, um, Philae, Philae, Philu, Philly, whatever Sounds it's called, right. uh, will hopefully get sufficient power in its battery to drill into the comet and analyse its makeup. Um but uh, I also think that comets look equally beautiful without makeup on, and that's just uh, that's just it's just ridiculous societal standards. expectations. Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, I think onto comets. Yeah, we but... shouldn't we shouldn't have to force comets to wear makeup to just yes. fit in with our expectations of what a comet would look like. I think that's ridiculous. Yeah, but you know, now now that we know they are, it's worth seeing what they what what makeup they wear. Hmm. No, it should be because, quite cool because science. Yeah, well, I mean, science is pretty cool. Indeed. That's that's why we're all here. Uh, there's a, a, an article on the BBC News website that calls it the plucky robot. Indeed. The plucky robot. Well, um, there are some quite adorable cartoons on the European Space Agency website. Uh, if you Google ESA uh, feli cartoon or Rosetta cartoon, if you can't spell feli, which I can't, uh, you can see some quite adorable uh comic strips they made of it landing and taking a selfie with Rosetta before they drop it onto the comet and then having a bit of a nap when when its solar panels die out. Oh, that's quite cute. You and should uh, post a... Yes. Should, we'll tweet, we'll a, tweet, we'll tweet it. a link to that. Uh, they have they published a new one as soon as it woke up. Um, I'll be tweeting a link to that in a moment. Uh, but it's just getting up from under its blanket and yawning and it's, it's, it's adorable. Ah. Oh. That's quite sweet. Well, uh, Amy uh, says if they don't name the comment, uh, the comet, comment, if they don't name the comet Rosetta Stone now, she'll be disappointed. Indeed. I I like that. Um, Certainly for those of you that know what Rosetta Stone is, that's a really nice geeky reference. If you don't know what Rosetta Stone is, you probably don't get it. Uh, And Dan says, uh, didn't comet go into administration many years ago? And uh, and Amy corrected him that they they maybe joined with PC World, but now apparently that was Curry's. So that's the latest on the chat room. Yes, you interesting people, you indeed. You're uh, all rather yeah, exciting. Absolutely. So should we uh, should we go for another song? Why not? Lovely. So we'll talk more about the bad song. We'll check the votes on those after that. We'll also start talking a bit about uh, possibly my my favourite meme of the day that I've seen. Um, but first up, it's a request. Ooh. Something that a listener has actually requested to Exciting. listen to. It's great. It's almost as if this show is interactive. I know. Tell me about it. So uh, this is for Joe. Hello, Joe. We Hello, love Joe. you. Well, let's give you a big virtual hug. Indeed. Too big? A little was bit, that, yeah. Was bring that, him, was that bring creep? a little bit. Okay. Bring a little bit. Okay, there we there go. There we go. Um, That's less creepy. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, here it is. Your fortnightly dose of random geekage. It's the Geekly Chronicles. It's all about the abstraction of matter in an infinite universe and, and stuff. I was rocking away to that song. Indeed you were. There Thank was, you. There was literally headbanging in the studio. There was. Thank you so much, Joe, for uh, requesting that song. Glad we got to play it. Nice to see you in the chat room. Indeed. Uh, yes. Awesome. Cool. Yes, Good there's stuff. Also, there's also a lot it. of hugging. In the yes. chat room at the moment. Oh, I love our little bot, our little robot. So it's cute. Adorable, isn't it? Yeah, I it's feel been uh, it's been hugging people. Such a proud parent. It's been it's been hugging itself. D- does it's it still do high-fiving. jokes as well? Oh, it, it does. Might. Do, it does cheer up things, doesn't it? It does. So this... if you do, is it exclamation mark cheer? I I I can't and remember. And then uh, let's send a cheer up to Amy. There we go. It does a now cheer up me message to there people. We are. Lovely. So that's cool. It is indeed. Uh, speaking of things that are slightly adorable, Catherine, from her trawling of the internet, informs us that it's National Kissing Day today. National Kissing Day? Apparently that's a thing. Is that is that on your calendar or...? No, I just saw it on Twitter. Oh, oh, lovely. Yeah. Have, you, have you been kissing many people today? I haven't been kissing any people today. Oh. The closest I've got is uh, giving, this, uh, giving this microphone 
you know, a bit of tongue when you weren't looking. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep that microphone. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Don't need it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we should burn that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Although you did make muffins. Yeah, I did, I did uh, make muffins, been... although I don't really know what that has to do with because, National Kissing Day. But... Because we put them in our mouths. Oh, yeah. So we, yeah. we right. basically kissed a muffin. Okay. All right. Anyway. Then. In the chat room, they figured out how to get Geekly Bot to hug things that are more than one word long, which uh... is also quite good, probably. So there we go. Fantastic. Good stuff. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> So how is the bad song doing? So we, we for those of you that um, only just tuned in, obviously we do our, our bad song of the week. And uh, this week, Chris has uh, decided that the bad song he wants to tender is Rockstar by Nickelback. We all just be big rock stars and live in but don't we all just want to be big rock stars living in whatever? You have Google. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and, <laughs> And my uh, my tendered bad song of the week is this gem from who is currently billed as the new Rebecca Black. And apparently we know that it's true. Indeed. You have danced to that song every time you've played it and it's <laughs> starting to alarm me. That's why it's a terrible song. So what are the results so far? We've got we've got some votes coming in. If you haven't cast your vote yet, definitely do at gkly.co forward slash bad song. Yep. Right open now, up a new tab. Yes, Go open a that. new tab. Otherwise you will, you will lose us and, and we wouldn't want that because that would be bad. So where are we? It's pretty... It's, it, it, it's pretty one way... Okay. And you're all wrong. <laughs> because w at, at present, winning with four votes to none is this. Apparently, our <laughs> audience tonight do know that it's true and love <laughs> chow ma 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 main <laughs> so oh, i love that. it i love that song it's so awful but yes if you haven't cast your votes yet then do do that awesome so your we full yes. results will be revealed later in the show gkly.co slash bad yes awesome. in the new tab because we're not clever enough absolutely so uh, I was trawling through Twitter earlier. As That's one always does. risky. Yes, well, I wasn't really doing much else today. And, um, yeah, I came across, a, like, you know, sometimes you see those trending hashtags and you think, That's, that looks ridiculous. What is that all about? And I saw the, if the Beatles had been fat right. hashtag. And okay. as someone who has... Uh, has a more rotund figure. I thought you were going to say, as someone who was part of the Beatles. But yes, I am one of the last few remaining Beatles. But I, I, to be fair, I would be perfectly prepared to expect that of you. Yes, it was John, Paul, George, and Princess Consuela Banana Hammock. Indeed. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so we've the, been watching the, but that. The, yeah. So I was, I was really prepared to be offended, but this hashtag has been having me in stitches. So it's, it's Indeed. essentially. Um, Beatles song titles and lyrics changed to be a bit um, to have food in the title food essentially in the titles. Um, <laughs> uh, but so those are some great ones Pork McCartney, John yep. Lemon Meringue George Hammerson and Onion Ringo Starr oh fantastic, <laughs> it's not bad those are wonderful um, we've got I Want to Hold Your Sandwich All You Need Is Loaf uh, we've got all kinds of Dr that. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band oh yes, I um, heard one earlier, but I've completely lost it off my screen now. Jalapeno Poppers, Lonely Hearts Club Band. Uh, <laughs> Flabby <I> Road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. Um, Eleanor Ribby. Yeah. I heard uh, Lonely Hearts Club Sandwich earlier. Uh, <laughs> Strawberry Shortcake Fields Forever. In some great, uh, some great lyric replacements, we've got, I want to hold your ham, which is a great one. And uh, yeah. she's got some chicken and fries, which is also a great one. We all live in a yellow margarine. That's a nice one. Hey, food. Yeah, keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> the Beatles oh, would be God. the Flab Four. That's very true. 
<laughs> two tickets to ride. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's hashtag if the Beatles had been fat on Twitter, which we have been we've been looking at pretty much all day instead of doing any kind of prep for the show. Um, <laughs> when I'm 64 stone. Nice. Uh, I get up with a little help from my friends. <laughs> Here come the sun, chips. <laughs> Can't buy me love handles. Nice. Happiness is a warm bun, I've seen a couple of times. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another good one. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Gastric Band. <laughs> okay. Uh, here comes the bun. Cheese loves you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Uh, Getting butter all the time. Yeah. With a little help from Jenny Craig. All you need is lard. We all live in a Subway sandwich shop. <laughs> Subway sandwich shop. Subway sandwich shop. Here comes the bun. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Uh, strawberry ice cream forever. These are wonderful. So if you have any <laughs> lard days night, that's nice. very good. It's been that's a very good. Lard days night. Yes. If you have any of these, do let us know uh, on Twitter using hashtag if the Beatles had been fat. I, think I am the walrus would have been a lot more yeah. literal. Yes. Yes. Very good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Strawberry jam forever. Yeah. I ate the eggs, man. I <laughs> ate the eggs, man. I ate the walrus. <laughs> they were goo 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 gooed. <laughs> uh, got to get you into my oven. <laughs> that's that's slightly threatening. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really not bad. Back in the refrigerator. <laughs> uh, these are all. These are all very good. <laughs> Please cheese me. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah. They'd um, be liver pudgelians. Oh, so I like it. You see, th- this is the, the, like, the bad pun central, <laughs> which is amazing. But yes. Amy said on Twitter, help, I need some burger. <laughs> nice. Fair enough. Uh, they've called themselves <laughs> the Skittles. I need some burger. Help. Yep. Not just any burger. Lucy on the phone with Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favourite. Yes. <laughs> Lucy on the phone with Domino's. <laughs> yes. We can pork it out, which actually sounds more sexual than it does. About, yeah, that's, that's a pickup line. That's a no, pickup line. Really yes. pick hey, line. we can pork it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Lucy in the sky with Funyuns. Uh, John Lennon would have married Egg Yoko Ono. Ah, uh, I see what he did. Clever. Someone has put photos of the Beatles through Fat Booth, that <laughs> app that you can get that uh, makes photos look fat. I'm retweeting that now. I came out now. a lot skinnier when I put a photo of me through that. That's how? How does it's like? Anyway, so I've retweeted the Fat Booth Beatles photos. She's got a ticket to ride. That's nice. Not a bad one. <laughs> Catherine's just tweeted. She loves stew. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah, it. She yeah. loves stew. Yeah. Stew's not really that fattening, though, is it? Probably not. Although I don't really... I... Well, n- not the way my family makes it. I mean, you know, if you make lamb stew, the lard actually kind of you know, floats on the top. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I, I, can, I was thinking of I my can... mum when I made that tweet. But... <laughs> <laughs> she really does but... love stew. Well, there we go. But is, is, that, is that actually stew, or is it just meat and lard in a pan? No, no, no. There, there are vegetables and, and gravy. And are there vegetables? Lots and lots or... and lots of onion. Lots of onion. Actually, I like yeah, onion. My, but I hate yeah, stew. My mum has a bit of an onion problem. Oh, no. We've had to send her to onion rehab. Onion rehab. Did you have an onion intervention? That was the worst joke I've ever done. We're going to pretend that didn't happen. Yeah, let's, let's move on. Let's move on Quick, please edit that out of the podcast version. King Ding Dan in the chat room says, has changed please please me to please feed me. Nice. Nice. Nicely done. Uh, let it beef, says Amy. Yeah. That's very good. Excellent. See, we're contributing. Indeed. We're contributing. Indeed, we are. So do do let us know if you have more. <laughs> yes, that was a, an incredibly amusing hashtag that we came across earlier. Yes. Yes, it was. <sighs> Lovely. I was expecting you to say something yeah. else there, Chris. Shall we like move on to a segment or something to fill the dead air we could do we have so, had another song request oh that's exciting yeah. let's play that while i write some more things down on this piece of paper uh-huh. now this this arguably is eligible for bad song of the week excellent uh but it's a request and we are on a bound to play requests that come in indeed we are um, for some reason i mean i do say no now and then mostly to songs that you say you want to play 
Yeah. Because you have just terrible taste in music. This has been discussed before. Mm -hmm. And you uh, you always seem to wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. That happens to me all the time. Yeah, I thought so as well. So after this song, we'll come in with the tumble fumble. We'll... uh, We'll talk through some of the other bits and pieces. We'll have a talk about E3 as well, because that was very exciting. We've got all kinds of news. I are excited about that. So there's loads of 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 cool stuff. Um, But this one is a request by Dan. Thank you, Dan, for exposing us to this. And uh, here is two minutes and 45 seconds of possibly one of the worst songs ever released. Literally coming at you at the speed of sound, it's the Geekly Chronicles. It's all about fourth dimensional string theory in modern physics. <laughs> and stuff. And stuff. Indeed. Ninja had apparently never heard the safety dance before, said in the uh, chat. How have you managed to escape that? Uh, I feel um, so lucky that you've not had to endure that song. Indeed. Although yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of praise for that song in the chat room. Yeah, a lot of people. Like, I'm not a big fan, but mm. as uh, as Catherine has said in the chat room, it does remind me of Scrubs. So there's always Just that. that. I'm thinking nice. of Catherine. <laughs> Indeed. So it's time for the tumble fumble. That was far more introduction than she usually gets. <laughs> okay, fine. Speaking of Catherine, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's more like it. <laughs> what? What have you got? Come on. What have you got for us? What? Catherine? <laughs> well, I've been forced to work the last couple of months, so uh, my, my tumbling and, and fumbling has, has taken something of a drop. So are you trying to tell me that, that productiveness at work and surfing Tumblr are things that, that like, moving... So the more work you do, the less time you can spend on Tumblr? Yeah, yeah, there's a definite inverse correlation there. Really? Yep. Crazy. Mm-hmm. That's weird. I know. Who? I mean, you never would have predicted, would you? Because um, two yeah. months ago, you were, you were it was all you did was look yeah. at Tumblr. Yes. Yeah, that was my whole world. And now I believe they call that fun lost. employment. You're infinitely more boring. Yeah. Yes. My boringness. I don't know. My bor- I... boring factor it, is up. It, it's up. <laughs> yes. I, so uh, you, you can tell. Yes. Yeah. You you can you're, tell. you're not even being I, original and witty anymore. Yes. I don't even know why we invited her back. To be honest with you. Well, she made it was muffins. because I was willing to pay for pizza. Uh, <laughs> and that's, muffins. That's, that's very true. She brought muffins. Yes. Anyway, so the Tumble Fumble, as you all know, the Tumble Fumble is uh, Catherine's best pick of stuff on Tumblr that she's seen recently. So what is this week's Tumble Fumble? Well, this one's been amusing me for a while. And, and you know, I think, I think it's pretty popular. So if you're on Tumblr, you, you may have seen it. If you're not, then, uh, then go check it out. It's uh, animalfactbook.tumblr.com. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pictures of animals with some facts about them. Really? Um, so the facts are just crazy enough to be true. Uh, perhaps, Chris, you could uh, you found one earlier that was rather amusing. Perhaps I did, you could, indeed. Uh, you could remind everyone. Yes, I'm just tweeting, particular... tweeting out the link to the Animal Fact Book. So on May the 5th, the Animal Fact Book decided to share with us a picture of an emu with the fact, the emu is Australia's national bird. Known to hoard white objects in their nests, they were often seen stealing envelopes from letterboxes and socks from clotheslines, which is why all paper in Australia is now by default yellow, and socks, navy or black. This is the quality, this is the level of quality you can But that sounds for. real. It sounds like a real fact. Oh, they're all real. They're, oh. they're all entirely real. I, um, maybe we can have some of our listeners in Australia confirm that for us. Give, but... give me another one. Uh, So, uh, on May the 4th, they posted a picture of a wombat sleeping. They said, a wombat sleeping. Wombats are unusual animals due to the way they sleep above ground, standing up with their eyes open. Really? Oh, wombats are cute. Yes. A fully grown kangaroo can reach a staggering 8.3 centimetres in length. They can move at speeds of up to 80 kilometres per hour and have been known to drown dogs with their powerful front limbs. Wow. Let's see. So, those are some animal facts. (laughs) Uh, and then I'm going a little off-piste for my next suggestion in that it's not on Tumblr. What? Uh, what I is know. this madness? So there's a life outside of Tumblr. There is. I wasn't aware there was a life outside I, of Tumblr. I tend to, to still kind of hang around on Twitter when I'm working. So, uh, so one, That's always good. So, so one account that I followed some time ago has actually, its amusement factor has gone up somewhat recently, I think. And that is that Riker Googling. Yeah. So you might need to know a little something about Star Trek The Next Generation to get anything out of this. But uh, yeah, Commander Riker, the first officer on the uh, Starship Enterprise, uh, what would he Google if he had access to Google? I'm looking at it now. This is brilliant. Captain Picard Day sales. Yep. 
<laughs> GitHub open source holodeck brothel. Why dinosaur cloning is illegal. I've got <laughs> Hypnotoad. <laughs> Galaxy class starship manual. <laughs> Marquee subreddit. <laughs> holodeck disable next episode autoplay. And then and how does a pencil work? <laughs> Andorian blue man group. Yes. Uh. <laughs> Very clever. Galaxy class starship. Reset BIOS. <laughs> I like this one. Tribble jerky. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't starships have more bathrooms? Actually, if you've uh, ever looked at the uh, the Starship Enterprises uh, blueprints, there, there is actually a book. You can get the, the Star Trek technical manual. Uh, the, the Enterprise D apparently only had one toilet near engineering. Really? That yep. seems like bad planning. Yeah. Yeah. A starship with uh, 1,500 people on it. One bathroom. Wow, I'm, I'm retweeting crazy. some of these uh, these Riker googling Star- searches Starship now. Starship main viewer ad block. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Star- Starship computer voice erotic fiction. <laughs> do do Vulcans watch porn? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Only once every seven years. <laughs> <laughs> do Borg poop? <laughs> Planets. That's actually a really good question. Do Borg poop? Planets with centaurs. <laughs> World of Warcraft Vulcan server allowing phasers in schools. Is the force real? <laughs> is, is Klingon cosplay racist? <laughs> uh, Do yeah. com badges cause cancer? Krispy Kreme near neutral zone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What happens if you drink a changeling? <laughs> <laughs> Holodeck JavaScript API for the developers out there. Planets with natural Wi Fi. Jean-Luc Picard, French or British? <laughs> Saucer section, not charging. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. Uh, Apple uh, Com badge pre-order. <laughs> we are just boring the socks off the non-Star Trek fans yes. here, aren't we? If you're following planets us, have Netflix? If you're following us on Twitter, Microsoft Holosuite, disable Clippy. <laughs> how, to, how to erase holodeck history. <laughs> Uh, 22nd century vintage porn. <laughs> <laughs> Why is space black? How many times has the Enterprise exploded? Starship keyboard shortcut all stop. Why does Klingon gawk <laughs> make your pee smell like potatoes? I don't know, but Romulan ale certainly has weird effects on your entire system, so maybe Riker will have Googled that as well. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. So if you're a Star Trek fan, that is definitely something to watch, and if you're not yes. a Star Trek fan, watch some Star Trek. Yes. Because right now, yes, right we've now. no, I've not right now. When no. the show's finished, yes, I've retweeted about ten of those uh, Riker googling right. things I'm on gonna, our Twitter. I'm so. going to take away your access to this Twitter again <laughs> soon. That's that. Why would you do that? I the world, know. the world needs to know what Riker is googling. We had some more people tweeting uh, if the Beatles had been fat at us as well. Amy Excellent. came back with Sergeant Pepper Steaks Lonely Hearts Club sandwich. Nice, that's a good one. Very nice. Uh, Rachel said Day Flipper. Yeah, <laughs> very good. We've, burgers, we've got so. some... Oh, I, I went to the dolphin and, you know, <laughs> and then I thought, what? Why are we eating dolphins? <laughs> we've, got some, we've got some people in the chat room uh, picking out their favourite Riker Googling as well. Slipstream is undefined. Holodeck program for hugs. That sort of thing. <laughs> I would love a holodeck program for hugs. Well, if you install Geeklybot on the holodeck. That'd be amazing. That would be amazing. If someone, if someone could make that happen, then, then please do let us know. Call us from the holodeck if you manage to get Geeklybot installed. That went yes. well, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was I was in the chat room. Yeah, <laughs> that's the, we got this show thing going on. You yeah, know, but the chat just... is so distracting because it's cool. Indeed, stop being cool, you people in the chat room. I never stop being cool. I mean, Everyone's you know, cool. don't do that, but also do that so we can do a show. And speaking of a show, I don't know where I'm going with this one, so I'm basically going to bodge this. Uh, it was E3 recently. It was the Electronic Entertainment Expo. I Three did, E's. I, I did just Google that. You did, didn't you? Yeah. Um, so there's been all kinds of exciting uh, video game news coming out of the E3 conference. Are you, <laughs> now, are you about to Chris try and, and get me to read the news? No, so Chris and I had a, a conversation about this before the show, and, and Chris does not know a lot about gaming. I know one announcement of the... 20 to 100 that have come out of e3 this week which one is that that's the one where you can now finally play xbox 360 games on your xbox one yes that is very good news very Indeed. cool news backwards compatibility which arguably should have been there on day one but hey engineering is hard we get that yes 
and uh, it's it's very much unlike Microsoft to ship a half baked product and then patch it with updates. You are after such it a comes fanboy. Out, you are such a fanboy. If you say so. Uh, um, so yes, there's uh, after googling it this afternoon, there have been all kinds of exciting announcements. Loads, and and I think what's really interesting about E3 this year is there was a lot of like virtual reality, augmented reality stuff going mm. on. So um, there was the uh, HoloLens Minecraft thing during the Microsoft keynote that looked just... So I think they're focusing more on augmented reality than virtual reality. And the fact that you okay. could view your Minecraft city on a table, I mean, it looked amazing. Obviously, we have to wait and see if, if the reality is as good as the keynote, but... That was really cool. Yeah. But then, I mean, Microsoft are partnering with uh, Valve VR and with uh, Oculus Rift to bring virtual reality to their platform. Sony announced a virtual reality platform. It seems that... That is the way everything's going, well, It's isn't a bit it? like 3D movies, right? In the 80s and the 90s, there were 3D movies and people had to wear those uh, blue and red 3d glasses and they weren't very popular and they went away and now 3d movies are back and they're good the technology has kind of come of age you could play horrible vr things 10 years ago but they weren't very good and now it seems that technology is really starting to come of age and you know i think that um (laughs) it's really exciting to think about the fact that we might have this uh this ability to do VR in the future, um, in the not too distant future. And as always, I think gaming is a great place for that technology to kind of first come to light. I mean, there are so many cool things that you could do with a Kinect and that kind of bundle of sensors and cameras and stuff. Special use of games. And I know sometimes we use the Xbox that constantly. I barely touch the controller when I'm watching stuff, but then I use my Xbox more for entertainment than I do for games. But, uh, you know, I think that there are, you know, some really interesting things that we'll be able to start doing with VR in the same way that people have started doing really cool things with Kinect and, and things like that, which is really cool. Um <laughs> Uh, apparently, Amy says 3D glasses are useful seeing, for seeing holes in the space-time continuum. As Indeed, we know, they are. David Tennant's doctor did tend to carry a pair in his pocket with him yes. uh, to look ridiculous every now and then. But just, then, just in case you need to check. David Tennant, the, more, the more ridiculous of the doctors. That's that's a debate that could go on for hours. I feel with yes. the with the geekly fan base. And Dan um, says Cortana is finally coming to Xbox One, which gives me another reason to justify having Connect. That is that'd true. Be good. Yeah, it does, yeah, that does actually look like it'll be quite a good, um, a good service, which is not bad. Um, so, Indeed. yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, I could yell now and my Xbox will turn on, but I'm not going to do that because I really don't want it to. Um, but yeah, there were some great, great announcements from other places as well. The Sony keynote was really brilliant for games announcements. It's, yeah. it, we seem to be in this. Um, everyone's feeling nostalgic at the moment. Yes. So there's a lot of remakes. There's a lot of remakes. There's a lot of new versions of stuff coming out by the looks of things. There's all sorts of that nostalgia bringing back the old versions of game. Can you tell that I'm completely making this up because I haven't read any of the articles? Do you know any of the games that are being remade? Not even a. Le- Apparently, Final Fantasy VII will be remade on PS4 first. Yes. Which TechRadar.com describes as the ultimate fan service. Uh, yeah, well, Final Fantasy VII is a fan favourite of the Final Fantasy games. Um, it is. I mean, I personally, um, I absolutely love um, Final Fantasy X, uh, but FF7 is really good. I just. I, uh, I believe you. I, well, I see, I, when I first played Final Fantasy X. I had an absolutely massive crush on Tidus in the game. Right. And as, as I always do, I always seem to fall in love with video game characters. And uh, Tidus was my hero. And I wanted nothing more than him to come and sweep me away in the night with his big sword and his blitz ball. This just got creepy, didn't it? It did a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, moving on, um, in other slightly non-creepy E3 news... Uh, we got all all of your big game companies launched a thing. <laughs> all of your big by game. the looks of stuff. You're just you're not doing a very good job. Of I'm this. not doing a fa- make I it up on know, the spot. I, are you? I don't understand video games anymore. I haven't played a video game since about 2009. Well, why don't so, you try one? Because 
My my Nintendo Reasons. DS is right there, and it's got games on it. Grab that and start playing a game. Seriously, give Pokemon a go. Okay. There you go. He's, he's grabbing. I'm, I'm gr- grabbing. I'm me. grabbing the Nintendo DS. I'm dropping bits of the Nintendo DS. Please don't. There you go. That's a charger. Okay, good. I didn't break it. Open it Here up. Here we go. go. We have we have a Nintendo DS. Let's turn the 3D off. Can't see the, I don't. Have you, this is it's a, this the, is the bottom madness. screen's a touch screen, so you can just tap on and tap on a game to play it. I do you that, want to turn the volume up so that we can hear it? There we I go. don't know how to do that. It's on the side, the, the but, little slider marked volume. Aha! There we go. So there are a couple of games downloaded on there. There's one in the cartridge slot. I see. I I'm. I'm going to just press some buttons. What game are we playing here? I have no idea. I think it's Pokemon. That that came up on the big thingy. On, on the screen? There we go. Yes, that's Pokemon. That. I press start. You can play as my save for a little bit. That's fine. I don't think you're going to do too much damage. I don't even know how to do damage. Pokemon Omega Ruby. That's it right. Says. Okay, press start. I have. Okay. It's, have you loaded my? I, it's. Hang on. Okay, we've got we've got a save on here. Uh huh. We've got Rustborough City. Yep. Go on. Wherever wherever that is. Uh huh. I'm. There's now some music. I'm in a place. Uh, there's there are, there's what appears to be a nurse. Ah, you're in a Pokemon Center. I see. So leave, leave the Pokemon Center and go find some tall grass, and in there you'll find a Pokemon's battle. Right. There, I'm. I'm in a city. Yeah. Tall, tall grass, maybe few and far between. Well, so I'll leave you playing that for a second while I just recap some more of the E3 announcements. We'll have that as background music. Go on. There we go. So while uh, while our non-gamer presenter here is learning how to play games all over again. Um, there were loads of, of huge announcements from E3. What I love is the fact that the Amiibos, the little toys that you now get that you can use kind of NFC with the, the new 3DS and the, the Wii U and things like that, are, are already selling out. And so they're having to um, they're having to increase the supply and demand for those things, which is great. Uh, there are loads more games. There's a bit of a yawn, really. Uh, another Halo game, another Gears of War game. There's just so many. There's a lot of games with people shooting stuff. One, yeah, it's one a, common to say. a great tweet that I saw was like um, Nintendo, as a human, capture small animals and then force them to fight each other for money. That actually sounds really cruel. It is horrific, yeah, <laughs> that, when you really think about it. That, you can I, use your illegal. finger on the touch screen. That's fine. Okay, um, I've got options should i go for the one with the bigger number or the one that sounds cool the one that sounds cool go on well i've got a water gun that's probably the coolest of the options depends what you're fighting i have no idea what i'm fighting oh although a little bar with colors in it just went down i got some sand spat at me and my accuracy fell anyway um i don't kind of remember where i was now something about games probably something about games there was new halo new gears of war that sort of thing yes so i saw a brilliant tweet uh you were saying about games with guns i saw a great tweet where like nintendo were like yeah so we made this thing and uh, we decided to run with it when it was really cool and ubisoft are like a man goes to an island with a gun and that's pretty much all ubisoft's games ever seem to be so it's like you know companies like nintendo i think are doing some cool stuff with non-shooty games but there were a lot of shooty games announced. Uh, and, you know, I'll, I will be the first to admit that I really don't like uh, first-person shooter games. I love RPGs. I quite like strategy games. I spend hours playing Civilization. Anyone that follows me on Twitter would know that I play Civilization pretty much any time I can. You won the battle! I've killed the weird raccoon thing. Well, it only fainted. It would be really cruel if it actually died. Uh, I think after what I did to it, it's probably pretty dead. Ah, fair um, enough. My Pokemon and I rule. Check us out, says some random person who was hiding in some tall grass. Yes, now this, you get to fight them. It's, this game is just like non-stop fighting, isn't it? Basically. There's a, there's a child throwing some kind of ball at me. And it's another one of those raccoon things. Zigzagoon. That one. Yes. Yeah. 
and I've got my blue fish spiky thing. Is that my mudkip? Marsh tomp. Ah, that's the evolved says. form of, of mudkip. I killed it in one thingy. That's <sighs> that's a thing that happened. Yeah, apparently. Youngster Joey is about to send in my chop. Will I switch my Pokemon? But you're playing. It's up to I, you. I don't. I don't know how to do this. As Ninji says in the chat, <laughs> Zigzagoon is quite cute. It is very cute. A lot of the Pokemon in, in Omega Ruby are really cute, but you still have to murder them. Yeah, that sounds about Capture right. Capture them in a ball and throw them at people and then make them fight each other until one or the other of them faints. I'm going to keep battling. Cause... So anyway, while Chris is battling, I'd love to hear from you on Twitter and in the chat room uh, or even a text message or a phone call. What do you think the best games are? I would love it after the next song if some people phoned in and told us what they thought of E3. So please do get your fingers on those buttons. Chris will update us all with the phone numbers after the next song. But we've got a request here. Uh, we're playing this song uh, for Amy. Amy, this is a song that you requested. And while Chris finishes destroying my Pokemon save, please enjoy Elbow. Unleash your inner geek. It's the Geekly Chronicles. It's all about relativity and particles and stuff. Indeed. 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 As, as we fade out the elbow. Yeah, absolutely. Almost timing it perfectly. My elbow often fades out. Indeed. So, Catherine, you just tweeted a correction. Yes. Apparently, I, I got the, uh, the link wrong for the animal fact book when I tweeted it. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you Catherine? But Catherine... Let me finish. Catherine has, <laughs> has corrected me. Why did you do that? Well, I realised that the, the animal fact book we'd found <laughs> before the show only had about five posts on it and hadn't been the animal fact book that I've been following and being amused by <laughs> right. for, uh, <laughs> for, several, for several months. So, uh, so yeah, the, the animal fact book I had been following is animal-factbook.tumblr.com. So let's go back and, uh, to this week's Tumble Fumble. Yeah, it's a, it's a brief fumble. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, as actually, well, you know, fumble implies it's it's rather brief, I think. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. Anyway. Okay. Um, but uh, but what is what does this animal fact book have in it? Uh, well, it, not only does it have your your quality animal facts, but they also answer your questions about animals wow. as well, which you know is is obviously an essential service. Indeed, they do. Uh, we've for got us curious geeks. We've got a question here. How many cats are there? To which the animal fact book has replied. More than enough to conquer this puny world. All hail our furry overlords. I like it. Very good. I think my cat is going through a rebellious phase. He's been scratching graffiti on my couch and hunting and bringing me vinyl CDs of 80s rock bands. What do I do? They said, most feline rebellious phases die out within one year. For now, try to fill your home with the works of the Beatles, Billy Joel and Elton John. But let your cat listen to Freddie Mercury. No animal should be barred from listening to Queen. <laughs> Very good. Uh, from from their PhD in zoology and phonology. I like it. So, I want to get that PhD. I'm sure you can find it on eBay, as we were discussing earlier. <laughs> All qualifications available online. Indeed. And So, we would love for you to call us and tell us what you think about E3. We would. Now we've discovered that our phone magically works, why not play with it a bit more? Absolutely. So if you're watching the YouTube uh, YouTube stream, the numbers are on the screen. Indeed they are. The numbers should also be on the website. They should be on the website. Although in case they're not, I'm going to read them out. Uh, so if you're in the UK, give us a ring on 02033 896 245. If you're in the US, give us a ring on 415-287-9705. And in Australia, 0428-122-143. If you're listening back to this in the recording, then you can leave us a voicemail. Indeed. As someone did leave us a voicemail earlier, and that voicemail said... I didn't expect you to go to voicemail, though. There you Which go. Which is good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you can leave us a voicemail. We can play that on our next show. But if you call us right now... Our phone will ring, and you will actually hear it ring live. We were we were interrupted earlier by a wonderful person that does wonderful things who played us a, a song, and we talked about bad songs. We would like to hear about E3. Please give us a call. Somebody yes. 
Anybody, is anybody out there? I'll, I'm going to start phoning random phone numbers if nobody calls in. Indeed. You can also send us a text message if you don't fancy the idea of speaking to us. And frankly, who would? You but can, yeah. Yes, we will read all of those messages out on air if they arrive. When they arrive. Let's be optimistic. There we go. I didn't expect it to go to voicemail, though. Indeed. There we go. I think we should use that as a new jingle. I like that. The Geekly Chronicles. I didn't expect it to go to voicemail, though. I like it. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's possibly my favourite accent of all time. I like that. I didn't expect it to go to voicemail. We have <gasps> We've got a, a call. ringing phone. It's coming from the US. Indeed it is. Let's answer this call. is a call for Geekly. To accept, press 1. I didn't know we did call screening. Hello, you are live on the Geekly Chronicles, please. Part is it the same person? <laughs> ah, we need <laughs> caller again. ID. Hello. We do. Desperately. <laughs> <laughs> if someone else calls in, feel free to drop me off. I just have opinions on one game for me three. Excellent. Well, that's more opinions than I have, so feel free to share them with us. Well, it's one of the games from the devs of Gone Home. Tell us more. <laughs> well, well, I haven't. Well, okay. I should probably describe it as something other than it's a video game. <laughs> That's a good start. It's a good start, yes. Okay. It's a video game about a, so a something that happens. And you move. Okay. I was playing a game much like that earlier, actually. That, that was Pokemon, though. I don't think this is the same game. You never oh, not know. Quite. No, this takes place on a space station. Oh, All right. That sounds quite cool. So what do you think of this game? Anyway, well, I'm very excited for it because I was very, very, very fond of Gone Home. So is this a, is this a sequel or a remake? Neither. <laughs> Ooh. I... Ooh. I think I consider it a somewhat spiritual successor, but I wouldn't mind if it somehow happened that they tied it into the plot of Gone Home because that would be moderately interesting. I have no idea how they could possibly relate it to the original Gone Home, considering what, it plot, what its plot was, but a creative developer could do it. So I haven't played a lot of games set in space, but the last game that was set in space that I did play was probably Space Quest V. Um, is oh, is this reminds this... me of a, of a completely unrelated tangent, but but it's also video game related. Go on. That is kind of amusing. Tell us more. Yeah. I was playing uh, Dead Space Three co-op with a friend, and every time we got in the list. I, I, uh, well, not every time I got in the list, but a couple times, I had landmines as a weapon in the game, so I thought it would be a great idea to set a landmine off in the list. Right. That crashed the game and desynced multiplayer. I see. So no landmines in lifts, then. No, that's, that's good advice for life. Oh, absolutely. I, I actually checked and it was a reproducible issue. <laughs> wow, okay, so... So not only did your landmine presumably kill the people in the lift, but it killed the entire no, it game. Didn't kill anyone. It didn't kill anyone. It just killed the game. Okay. And what game was this? I mean, the friend and I were at the point in the game where I was using a rocket launcher at point blank range and not even getting knocked back. <laughs> Excellent. Ah, oh, just like real life. Oh. Yes, just like real life. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I I I get that problem a lot. Well, thank you very much for calling again and giving us your E3 opinions. We will keep this line clear. If anybody else has an opinion on E3, please do give us a call. We would love to hear from you and, uh, and hear your thoughts on the announcements at E3. I've been looking through. There is some really interesting stuff that's been launched. Uh, there was a lot of stuff around games history that was on display there. Um, there, there is a lot of this kind of idea of bringing toys to games, like the Amiibos, the mm. Skylanders, things like that. You have no idea what I'm talking about. I've it's... heard of Skylanders. Right. I've seen an advert on TV. Wow. That's about as much as, much as I know about anything but there's a, the there was, video games. I mean, the E3, I think, this year for me is summed up by Nostalgia and Splatoon. Right. 
And if you don't what know what Splatoon? Splatoon... See, this is, Splatoon is the only thing that is making me want to buy a Wii U right now. Okay. Wii oh. U still sounds like a siren to me. Wii U, Wii U, Wii U. That would be why. Right. Uh, so, yeah. I, uh, I really want to get a Wii U because of Splatoon. Because I think that... Um, that it's uh, it's just a cool game where you splat ink at each other. Okay. Battles and stuff. I, I played that once in a Staples. But it's quite right. I, I got I got thrown out. Yeah, I'm not surprised. They weren't a fan. Uh, but it looks like a really cool game. A lot of my friends are playing it, so I really want to get a Wii U and play that. Uh, Dan has just posted a picture in the uh, the Freenode, the IRC chat room, uh, Saying, uh, look at these adorable nerds and understand why I can't wait to play this game. This is about the uh, the new Zelda game that is uh, is being released. It, yes, everyone is a little bit adorable. Um, Amy says, best mobile game is Ingress. And I have played Ingress a little bit. It's kind of like a, a game where you have to actually get out and, and go see things in person. Um, Sounds scary. Well, yeah, it's, you don't you don't have to go and meet people in person. It's just you have to go kind of via oh, landmarks and, and capture them because there's alien energy flowing through. But uh, uh, and currently, I'm playing a mobile game. You may remember on uh, last uh, the last show, I was obsessed with a game that involved uh, growing a fish. Yes, called Mola yes, Mola. Were. I've completed that game. It's several ringing times. again. It's ringing again. This is a UK number. Let's see Indeed what this person is. has to say. A call for Geekly. We should stop this call screen, I think. Press one. Hello, you're live on the Geekly Chronicles. Please do not swear. Who are we talking to? Um, I Jake is who you are talking to. Hello. Hi, Jake. Ah, so Hello thoughts there. on E3? Um, well, I've not particularly been following it, but the one game I am excited about is Star Wars Battlefront, the because they're creating a new game of it. Um. So that's exciting. I'm a big fan of anything in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, I mean, I kind of grew up with Battlefront 2. <laughs> awesome. And probably think, sunk several hundred hours into it. Well, I mean, why not? When you're young, you've got as many hours to spend gaming as you like. And then when you get a bit older, you can spend hundreds of hours on Tumblr if you're Catherine. Indeed. Although not now, apparently. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> it's... I mean, in terms of the graphics and the UI, it looks quite good, and it's very modernized um, compared to the original games. Um, but it's lacking, like, it's made by a different, like, it, it's being made by um, EA rather than the original developers, who I can't remember the name of, um, cause it was bought out, and then it's not a continuation of the franchise, so it's going to, the kind of gameplay and the features of the game are kind of completely different. Um, and it's lacking a lot of things at the moment. But then um, I think at E3, the only thing they showed was the like a first bit of gameplay from um, Hoth, which looks quite exciting. Uh, that's H-O-T-H, not H-O-F-F. We're talking about Indeed. the planet Hoth. As opposed to, as opposed to David Hoth. Hasselhoff. Yes. yes. So, yep. um, so, Jake, while you're on, we were talking earlier about uh, trying to explain things in 10 words, which was a suggestion from a listener. And we're going to get to that a bit after the next song. But sat here at the table in front of me uh, for this podcast, I have uh, my co-presenters. We have Catherine of the Temple Fumble. Say hello. Hello. There we go. And okay. we, have, we have Chris. Hello. And neither of these people are particularly into video games. Is that fair to say? Definitely. Yeah. That's right. very fair. <laughs> so, so Jake, in 10 words, can you find 10 words to convince either Chris or Catherine that giving this game a go would be the right thing to do? Um, I'm not sure that I can. <laughs> Catherine's really easily you persuadable. You have words left. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can. Now, that's... Um, Oh, if you're counting the um as a word, then fair yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, I counted the um. Okay. You're mean. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to count the um, but... Maybe if I'd spent Star more time Wars on Tumblr, I'd be in a fun. better... There you go, there's okay. the other four. Star Wars is fun. Now, Catherine, okay. do you agree okay. with that? Okay, so I've my experience of Star Wars is, is just the films. Um, and, you know, I like them, I can watch them, but I wouldn't say I was, you know, a Star Wars geek in any way. Um, you know, I probably wouldn't choose to watch them. You know, I find them a little Get long. Out. 
But um... Get out. <laughs> Seriously, why do we keep inviting her onto the show? <laughs> you can talk. Have you even watched them? I've seen Star Wars. Yeah? Once. Which was your favourite character? The one that had the lightsaber and... Like Jar Jar Binks. Save Don't today. say Jar Jar Binks. Never say Jar no, Jar Binks. Not Jar Jar Binks. I, I know enough not to say that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I have watched Spaced. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's close enough. But so so what I was going to ask was, is the extended universe is is it richer? Is the is the more will I get more out of Star Wars if I if I venture into the uh into the rest of the universe beyond the films? I think that's one for yeah. you, Jake. I would assume so. <laughs> You're okay. on minus four right. words now, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm probably not going to bother. Well, <laughs> I, well, I will play it for you and tell you how it is. I'll even come to your house and play it in front of you. There we go. Okay, good. Which sounds a lot worse <laughs> it, <laughs> said out loud it really than it did in my head. Yeah. <laughs> well, as long as you're... Yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy the pizza, don't worry. <laughs> Uh, so, any any other uh, thoughts from E3 that you'd like to share with us there, Jake? No, not particularly. Um, Do you know what Splatoon no. is? A lot of people have been talking about it. Uh, they have. I've not seen any videos or anything of it, no. Uh, yeah, well... We're all a bit mystified here as well, but it's apparently awesome. Anyway, thank you very much for calling in and sharing your opinion. We will check out the new Star Wars game, and I will force Catherine and Chris to play it, even if I then lose them as a friend as a result. Indeed. All right. I yeah. begrudgingly look forward to it. <laughs> Thanks very much. So, um, brilliant. Look at that. We have phone-ins and everything. Indeed. We're almost like real proper <laughs> radio show. We're almost like a real proper radio show. I know. It's crazy. Yes. Anyway, uh, we now have another request to play. Ooh, exciting. How exciting. This song is for James. James is actually listening in the car at the moment, driving to uh, to near Essex. Okay. Yeah. I really hope James isn't also in the chat room. Uh, I don't think James is in the chat room. Let's have a look. Nope. Nope. So, um, this is for James. James had this request. It's by a band that I hadn't actually heard of before earlier, but I... Gave them a listen, and actually, this is pretty good. So here is uh, "Virtual Is Where We Live" by a band called Approaching Nirvana. You heard of them? No. I've no. heard of Nirvana. Not the same thing. But yeah, not the this, same thing. This, is, this only. I was well. I was sneaking up on. Yeah. Yeah. If you will. Approaching. They are approaching. approaching. They're kind of like tiptoeing behind Nirvana. I'm thinking there's some kind of mathematical them. joke I could make here. Go on then. No, I, I can't think of it. That's why I'm <laughs> saying kind of, that. I'm sure somebody geekier some than me would approaching Nirvana, would, tending you know, towards as tending towards Nirvana. Yes, yeah. ah, Jake. Something says, how like have that. you not heard about approaching Nirvana? I live in a cave. Can you not hear the? To be echo? fair, you have been locked in the geekly bunker for the last ten years. That's true. Uh, but I have heard that they are great. Jake says they're fab, and this is a request for James. Please enjoy. I need that badum tish. Why don't we have that? On I the... should. I have a have a thing right. So yes, uh, we said earlier that we would look at doing edits. Plug in your computer and pictures of cats. Yeah, that's the words. Basically, Indeed it is. The word can also be replaced. Let's try and uh, explain as many things as we can in ten words. So uh, please, on in the chat room on Twitter, tell us what you would like us to say and uh, to 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 do in ten words, and we'll see if we can uh, we'll see if we can do it. Uh, in that last song, for example, anyone want to see if they can describe that last song in ten words? I've got it. Go on. Oh, Catherine's oh. got one too. Let Catherine <laughs> no, go no, first. no. I had twelve words. Oh, so, okay. so you go, go on. I'm going to go with "I went to the loo, so I don't understand it." Okay. What was yours going to be? I wasn't really listening. I was giving my sweaty ears a break. <laughs> right. Okay. There we go. Was Twelve words. Yes. Uh, love it. So, uh, what else could we try and describe in ten words? I mean, the suggestion earlier <laughs> was particle physics or string theory. So, how do you explain string theory in ten words? I'm looking at the physicist at yeah. the table. 
Well, seeing as my physics degree pretty much destroyed my enthusiasm for physics, the only thing I can think of when I think of string theory uh, is Sheldon Cooper ah. uh, on the Big Bang Theory, because he goes on about that a lot. Um, yeah. I don't know. It destroyed your enthusiasm for phys- physics that much. Yeah. Okay, uh, tell us about magnetism in ten words. We've got some furious hand counting. <laughs> I've got one here. for string theory. Uh, hang on a second. Let's see if we've got <laughs> one. I can use magnetism to stick things to my fridge. Yay. <laughs> nice. I like it. String theory. Go on. It's about strings vibrating in space. That's all we know. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, we've had someone say, um, can we do Tumblr in 10 words? What is Tumblr in 10 words? I'm looking at our resident Tumblr expert here. Yes. <laughs> it is the destroyer of productivity, spare time, and boredom. Brilliant. <laughs> it is the destroyer of productivity, spare time, and boredom. That's Wonderful. Tumblr in 10 words. <laughs> Pianos yeah. in 10 words. Let me see. Hmm. Uh, strings are hit with a hammer keys you can play <laughs> that's a piano in 10 words you press some keys and they make noise how many is that nine <laughs> <laughs> mine was a- an actual description of a piano <laughs> well mine was a description of the important bits of a piano you press some keys and they make noise you're a pianist Ta-da. i can tell Indeed. Oh, you're pointing to the piano that yes. you're sat next to as well. So it's like as, as, as if yeah. the listeners can see. Indeed. Look at this piano, listeners. There is a piano next to us. It does work. <laughs> <laughs> Dan says, pianos. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And we've got uh, James on Twitter saying, if you're doing Tumblr in 10 words, what is Twitter? Twitter in 10 words. Oh, God. Um Lots of angry people making nice people sad quite a lot. Often. Quite often. often. There, there go. you go. Um, <laughs> people sharing opinions on mindless crap nobody really cares about. That's there we Twitter go. in 10 words. That's, that's the internet in 10 <laughs> words. <laughs> that's, uh, that's this program in 10 words. <laughs> And YouTube in 10 words is never read the comments, never read the comments, oh God. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds yeah. about right. <laughs> that is YouTube in 10 words for me. Accurate. Yes, yes. very much so. Uh, so what else? 10 words, 10 words. We've done science, we've done the internet things. Um, Chris, you uh, you had a quick game on Pokemon earlier. Describe it in 10 words. Okay. This is a test to see how much attention you were paying. Furious uh, finger counting going on once again. I don't understand. I killed something. Help, I am confused. Excellent. (laughs) See, really, you could have just gone with, I want to be the very best like no one ever, and then you run out of letters. Yeah, that's why I didn't do that. Uh, What a shame. (laughs) Indeed. To catch them is my real test to train them, and then I run out of (laughs) letters. We've got the English language in 10 words. Uh, overly complicated, unpronounceable <laughs> words that other countries like to butcher. Yep, that sounds about right. Yeah, this podcast in ten words. What was that one you had about mindless opinions? <laughs> sharing <laughs> this, to this people podcast who aren't listening? in ten words. We honestly tried to plan it, really, but hey, pizza. Yeah, that's about how it went this afternoon. Yep. So that's the podcast in ten words. Yep. Uh, portal in 10 words um well psycho computer that loves cake tries to kill you lots that was 10 words i've got 10 words go on aperture science we do what we must because we can nice i like it there we go that was very (laughs) very very good i'm impressed i think that was 10 words that was i'm starting to doubt myself (laughs) Uh, aperture science we do what we must because we can yes, yes. there we go <laughs> excellent well done well done dogs, dogs in, in ten, ten words. words dogs in ten words um um sit down roll over do you want a treat woof, woof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excellent um, 
<laughs> uh, so cats in 10 words then. Mm. Basically Go. the same thing, but they don't do any of the things you tell them. <laughs> Go away. I'm sleeping. Give me food. What is that? It's a cat in 10 words. That was 10, right? Something like that. Are you? Are you? I'm, I'm trying to make make my own one up. I've got I've got six out of my ten words so far, which are get out of the geekly studio. Ah. But, um, so someone has said pudding in ten words. Pudding mm. in ten words. Let's mm. think of those muffins that we were made earlier. Uh, hmm. Now is this is this pudding in in the very British sense, just meaning dessert? Oh, that's true. Or is true. this pudding as meaning... in uh, like a an actual dish? Mm. Well, I'm going to take it as the British description of pudding, i.e. dessert. Um, so, mm, put it in my mouth, please. Put it in there. Okay. Why are you looking at me like that? I wasn't. I was looking at my fingers, which you can't see because they're under the table. I was counting words. Ah. <laughs> Something like counting cards. No. Okay. It, it's much less complicated. I ah. just move my finger and, and count it. Rather than, you know, getting thrown out of a casino. Also, my well, name good. is pronounced like Newt with a G. Gute. I see. That is that is our mystery caller. Indeed. Um, so there we go. And uh, we've already done Twitter in 10 words. Uh, Twitter in 140 characters. That's That'll be a challenge. More than 10 words. That's more than 10 words. <laughs> It also um, requires more thinking than I think any of us are prepared for. Oh, far more thinking than any of us are prepared for, indeed. Far more thinking than I've done in most of my life, I think. Weren't you just talking about having done exams? Yeah. That doesn't mean I was thinking. No, that is fair <laughs> enough. The, uh, the examiners can expect some very detailed drawings of bumblebees and other stuff that popped into my mind. I thought you, I thought you were going to say drawings of bums then. <laughs> <laughs> I would totally just well, draw, draw bums on my exam paper. Mm. I might have actually done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bam, one degree in physics later. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when, when I finished. Where you know, did you get your degree, back. Catherine? Because we were talking about getting degrees on eBay earlier. Yeah, so, I, well, I, I got I my degree in exchange for drawing a picture of a butt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a PhD in... But studies, but butology, butology. I like it. Um, I have a anyway. PhD in horribleness. Uh huh. Nice. Yes. Yes. It's not Doctor Horrible segue there. Indeed. So, how are we doing with the bad song of the week? Chris? That would be the next question. We're on air for eight more minutes. Let's pick a winner, <laughs> and the results are interesting. And by interesting, I mean, as I said earlier, you are all wrong. But currently, we, uh, we have one vote for my uh, suggestion, which was... And six votes for... So I think we have to say uh, on this occasion that the winner was Chinese Food by <laughs> Alison Gold. And Ninji has said, uh, I love Chinese food in 10 words. I love I like Chinese, Chinese food. I like Chinese food. Yes, you know, it's true. Hey, <laughs> that's, yes. the, that's the words of the song. That's about uh, right. Jake says Rockstar is a good song. So, Chris, you're presenting this as the worst song of the week here. Please defend your argument, Jake. You're wrong. <laughs> it is the epitome of everything that is wrong with Nickelback. It is... It... It... I, it, it, it specifics. It's just horrible. Yeah, give us it's specifics. A, because... <sighs> I don't know. So what, I just thought it was bad. So what are the final votes in this week's bad song the of the week? The final votes in this week's bad song of the week are six votes to Chinese Food by Alison Gold. And one vote for Rockstar by Nickelback. You voted, didn't you? <laughs> that one vote came from you. 
So I, with... I don't know what you're suggesting. <laughs> I'm entirely impartial, so and with... you're all wrong. So with that, we get to listen to the worst song of the week before Indeed, then we putting do. it into the flames of forgetting about it forever. So here we have Chinese Food by Alison Gold. And Alison Gold is being billed as the new Rachel Black. So Rebecca bear in mind Black. Re- Rebecca Black, sorry. So there is a <laughs> music video for this. We'll post a link up to it on YouTube. But this song is is a real song that has been recorded seriously released seriously and the video features the artist having a bit of a love affair with a panda who right. then turns into a rapper i see so here we go uh it is rachel gold alison you know, gold alison gold what is with your what is with rachel today <laughs> i don't know i was watching a lot of friends earlier yeah and that's what we do instead of planning the show you know she really likes chinese food she does wow so there we go oh there was even a gong at the end. Well, for just effect. to just to add to the whole Chinese stereotype, possibly racism yes, that's yeah. going on in that song. Uh, <laughs> so, says, so Jake, the is... best thing about Chinese food is that without the abysmal lyrics, this wouldn't be that bad, and it would actually be pretty catchy. It is pretty catchy. Yes, but uh, yeah, <laughs> the lyrics are abysmal. Um, did they sing chopsticks or chops dicks? That says Catherine. Yeah, <laughs> you're, just, you're just going to start giggling in the corner there. <laughs> yeah, That's you, what she's you been doing all show. To uh, lower the to lower the tone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we always do. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> well, there we go. Uh, Jake says, "My <laughs> God, this is awful." Yes, yes, it is. It is actually. Really it really quite is. Bad. And you, you listeners, chose it to be the most awful song of the week. Yes, it's, it, the, yeah, there's Nickelback, and then there's that, and then there's that. Then I there's concede. That. I see your point. Yes. Absolutely. So, so we're that's, at, that's the end of the show. We're at the end of another much. episode of the Geekly Chronicles. Indeed, we are. Which is uh, frankly odd, but you know, here we are. Here we are, indeed. Um, when are we going to do the next one? Well, the next one will be as advertised, as promised, in two weeks. Excellent. So, the next episode of the Geekly Chronicles. Now that the exam season is over, indeed, uh, it is, and we are. Back in two weeks' time, so Friday the 3rd of Pulai. Indeed, as Catherine described it Why is it, it called Pulai? Because I'd like to lower the tone of <laughs> <laughs> the conversation. Right, okay. so that's, that's the only good, reason good. in which... Right, so the 3rd of July, we will be back. Uh, fantastic, yay, good stuff. We will. We'll have all kinds of exciting content that I'm sure we will plan at about two hours before the program absolutely but uh, you know huge thanks to the people that called in tonight so to Goot, to jake thanks very much for calling in that's been really cool yep. thanks to everyone in the chat room big shout out to ninji amy emma old eldritch Goot, jake king ding dan uh rachel and of course catherine for being on the show uh as always, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and, and remember, you can leave us voicemails uh, that we will pick up next show. Uh, Ninji in the chat room says, I hope that Gute's voicemail makes it into the jingle. Absolutely. It just might I have think, to. Yeah, I think, I think we, we should hear it one more time. Oh, uh, hang, on, hang on, switch to the right tab. I didn't expect you to go to voicemail, though. That's there excellent. There we go. So, yes. We might have to make some new jingles. We might. And if we do make some new jingles, we will absolutely include... I didn't expect it to go to voicemail, though. And Excellent. I believe here's another one. Oh, got to load it. Nope. Oh. Remember back when the <laughs> phones were working? Yeah. <laughs> Did you just break everything? Oh, apparently, I don't know. I'm going to okay. blame Google Chrome. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, moving on. So, yes, we will be back in two weeks' time, uh, Friday the 3rd of July at 7 o'clock in the UK and... 2 p.m. Uh, in Eastern time in the U.S., apparently. 11 a.m. PST, 11 a. yes. Yeah, uh, about 4 a.m. in some parts of Australia. And about 2 a.m. in other parts of Australia. Yeah. Basically, Google it. Well, yeah, <laughs> we'll I mean, put if it, you go to our website, yeah, it does tell you your local time. All of the information. If you need an easy way to remember it, just think of a bag of crap. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did say I'd been watching far too much Friends. That. That you had. So, uh, so uh, from me and from Chris and from Catherine, thank you all so much for tuning in, and uh, we will see you in two weeks. Indeed, we will. Goodbye. The third of Pulai. The third of Pulai. Stay safe, kids.
Yeah, stay no. in school and except don't do don't don't do sandwiches. Don't don't do sandwiches. Don't don't do too yeah. many. Maybe maybe just one, one or two. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>